Greetings and salutations, Charlton66 here once again with another video. And as always, I hope everyone has been doing well and had a good weekend. And those who uh, were able to attend the Baltimore Comic Con over the weekend, I hope you had a blast, I hope you had a good time, found the books that you wanted, found some new things, found some surprises. Everyone seemed to have a good time. So that's one thing I'm going to talk about, um, you know, before I show some books is uh, the Baltimore Comic Con this year. Um, it was great. Uh, had a great time. It was it was different. I know COVID had a lot to do with it, the, the, but they had everything well organized. You had to show that you were vaccinated or COVID test within 72 hours. Um, the Temperature check, all the kind of good stuff. They had everything all in place. It was great. Everything ran smoothly. Um, there was a lot of people. A lot of people taking advantage of the time, taking advantage of what, you know, getting out and going to their, this area's first major con, in, you know, since uh, the pandemic. But the vibe was different. It Again, it's a, it's a collector show. Uh, make no mistake about it, it's a strictly comic book, comic book convention. Three days of dealers, comic books, artists, writers, everything you can think of about comic books. Now, in the past, they they did have media guests and everything else, but that didn't, it, doesn't, it did not overshadow what the convention's all about. So, that being said, this year was different. I didn't see a lot of cosplayers. Um, you didn't see a lot of people there to see, to be seen, you know, look at me, look how cool I am, I'm at a con, I'm so cool, look at me. Not to put negative light on that, but there, are, you know what I'm talking about at conventions, there are people there seen to be seen, that's what they want to do. Um, they're not really there for comic books, but it seemed to be, because even on social media, there's a connection. There's a, not a lot of videos about Baltimore. There's a, not a lot of stuff on Instagram for, about Baltimore. There's stuff, but not as much as it used to be where people are taking pictures in front of cosplayers or cosplayers taking pictures of themselves and look how cool we are. None of the booth babes, so to speak, were, were in attendance. They really narrowed down to comic book dealers. And that's what it was. There were deals to be had. Um, there were a lot of it. It varied. You had your ex inexpensive. I've got a bunch of books, two dollars a piece, to thirty-three thousand dollar books, hundred and fifty thousand dollar books. I mean, it 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 went. I mean, it you it went across the the whole spectrum. But it was a good show. Um, not having it last year. Uh, I really missed it. Uh, that's the only big con that I do go to is Baltimore. Um, we have smaller cons here, which you guys who watch my channel know about because I attend those and show comics that I've gotten there. But this is really a good um, a good cross section of our collecting society, our collecting community. Um, you had a lot of people there getting signatures, getting art, getting comics. You know, making the deals. And really having a good time just collecting comic books. That's what my take was. Again, I can I might have a different someone else might have a different outlook. I know the only YouTuber that I that I knew was Longbox Love Affair. He was there in line for the we were VIPs. Um, we got the VIP package because he was in line for the VIP, so I know that's what he got. But I got the the VIP package for the whole the whole uh, the whole weekend. Um, which was pretty good um, for the VIP package for three for the three days. It was one sixty five, and for that you got in early for all three days. You got um, the VIP program book, which I'll show in a second. You got a forty dollar voucher for at the at the the um, the booth for the the promotional booth for glasses and T shirts and sweatshirts and hats and whatever. That they might have. You got a free t-shirt. Of course you got the VIP pass. You have got. Um, uh, a voucher for a. a limited edition. Uh, Frank Cho print. Which I didn't take advantage 
of that because I didn't like carrying the prints around, um, trying to get a cover for it, and it just I just let that go. Um, what else did you get? You got a T-shirt, the program, the forty-dollar voucher, uh, the yearbook. The VIP pass. That was about it. But for 165 I think it's a pretty good deal. So, took advantage of that. Really had a good time. Um, like I said, the vibe was was different. And it was it was a good show. So, enough about that. Um, anyone else who went to the Baltimore Con has got a different outlook. Who watches my video or have a different feel about it. Please put in the comments. Because um, I know we talk about cons. They're very important to us. On our uh, on our collecting um, journey, so to speak, uh, so cons are very important. In Baltimore, it's Saturday. Oh my gosh! Side of the line went around the convention center and back again to the to the the end of the line was around the convention center. It looked like, and the end came back to the beginning. So it's around the convention center, back around to the beginning because they were taking temperature and. I think they nixed that for Sunday because it had the lineup so, so much for the temperature tanking. But there were a lot of people there, and it was a, it was a good time. So uh, onward to the books that I picked up. Um, one of the uh, the books that I picked up was um, Tales of the Mysterious Traveler number ten uh, from fifty eight. Uh, don't do CGC books, but I mean I'll buy them. But this would be cracked out. It, you know, when I get the chance to sit down and read it. Uh, but it's not going to stay in, in, encapsulated. It'll come out. But I got a pretty good deal on this. Um, it's a 5.0 off-white to white pages. And I got, like I said, a pretty good deal on this one. My big purchase, I'm trying to get the whole 10 issue run. Uh, I've talked about it before on my, uh, on my channel. And it's the Yellow Jacket from Charlton. Um, this is number 7. Uh, if It's a 6.5 from um, 46. January of 46. Um, love this book. I love the character. I've got 1. Now 7. And then I'm going to have 8. I got 8. So they're pretty. They're 6.5. I think for all 3 issues right now. But, uh, like I said before, my plan is to get all 10 issues, take a picture of them, all 10, and then take them out of the slab and have them in the collection so I can read them. Uh, one of my favorite artists I mentioned before is um, Jim Carafuri. Phenomenal guy, great artist. Um, I've been following him for years since his Valiant Days. That right over there, the show's one of my first pages I bought from him right there. From 94, it's a valiant page of, um, of, uh, so the destroyer and the Psy Lords. Uh, you're taking commissions, of course, so I had to get a commission. And one of my favorite villains is an off the wall villain. Um, shout out to Howler Mouse because he likes his villain too. Is Replicon first appearance in 108? Yeah, Green Lantern, Green Arrow. Um, uh, very cool villain. He's uh, he's pretty he's pretty neat. Um, they don't I don't know if anyone knows what they've done with him currently. I would love to know. I try to research a little bit, but another character came up called Replicon, and it looks nothing like him. So or it because he's an alien. No one knows really, you know, much about him other than his ability to turn into gaseous form and mimic, hence the name Replicon, the heroes that he encounters. It's a great issue. I highly recommend it to pick it up. It's a great character. So that being said, um, one of the commissions that I picked up was uh, Replicon by Jim Calafuri. This is uh, his rendition, which is just is just phenomenal. I love the wings, the pose, everything about it. It just looks really, really good. Very happy with this. He did a great job on it. Very happy. Another commission I picked up, the Frame Brothers, um, who've done independent stuff. The two brothers, um, one does the pencils, from, from what I gather, one does the inks. 
but they're really good. They got a clean line, um, very comic book style, um, old school comic book style artwork. And one of my favorite horror movies, if you can call it a movie, is and everyone's heard of it. Not everyone, but people who are in obscure movies or so bad that they're good and maybe so bad that they're good and they're bad again and they come back to being good. I don't know. But it's Manos, The Hands of Fate. Um, anyone who's seen it and knows about the movie knows what a a um, notorious movie, the way it was made, the actors who ended up dying and high on drugs while they were making it and just a crazy, weird, bizarre movie. The cinematography, bizarre, the dialogue, the music. I got the soundtrack, which is bizarre like the movie but anyway uh, anyone who's watched my channel know I like I know I like Doc Savage so I wanted to do a, a fall a fall a faux <laughs> a faux cover like a Doc Savage novel of him facing off against Manos so the Frame Brothers got this for me they did this Manos the Hands of Fate against <laughs> against Doc Savage uh, I think they, they did really well. They really captured Manos. How he looked. He's such a goofy looking guy anyway. And our man Doc. There to face off Manos. It's the it's the Dust of Death. The the Bama cover. Of Dust of Death. For the Doc has paperback novels. Where I gave them a reference. And then there's a picture of Manos from the movie. So the guy from Dust of Death. Behind Doc is in the same similar pose. So. They were able to capture that for me, which I thought was very, very cool. So I got those commissions done. And one of the nicest guys in comics, Steve Conley, who's guy who has been getting accolades and, and, and awards and everything else for his uh, middle age uh, online comic strip. And plus the printed, the, the printed books. Just the way he does art and the way he does storylines on the computer and it's just fascinating um so he found old um astounding space thrills um online uh his comic strip his computer his computer design comic strip uh, the best way i can describe it he put it to paper but he had to transfer it over because the stuff Apparently, I don't know a lot about the computer art world, but the, the the discs and stuff that he had, of course, it's hard to fit it now on the modern day computer, so he had to modify stuff. Long story short, he put it all together. Um, oh, I'm going to lose some comics here. Hold on one second. So he had a Kickstarter for his Assigning Space Thrills for New Adventures. Of the old storyline brought back into now a new format um, which is a nice hardbound book I bought he I the Kickstarter for the support first of all I'm I know I'm all over the place here give me a second first of all for his support he knows I'm a big Thunder Ages fan so is he so he did his nice dynamo breaking through a wall very cool as for part of the rewards for the Kickstarter um, uh, campaign that I pledged to. Um, these are with them, some of the rewards. I didn't know this was coming. He surprised me with this and I thought it was really great. Um, on my Instagram page, I have a picture of Steve hold, holding this up on one of my, on one of my things. So on the book, as part of the as part of the um, campaign and the rewards Sign Space Thrills button got some stickers Sign Space Thrills stickers one shiny one in a matte finish was um, AST spaceships a cool patch a lapel pin a nice Hildebrandt Brothers lithograph from one of the earlier um, Stunning Space Thrills uh, books that came out in the 90s. 
late 90s, early 2000s, by Greg Till, Tim Hildebrandt. Mm -hmm. I got that. And he got some great guys to do the comic book covers and the collection covers from Steranko, Drew Struz, Struzan, I think I'm saying his name right, the movie poster guy, um, Greg and Tim Hildebrandt, of course, Steve Conley doing his stuff. But this is a nice undersea menace from the year 3200. And the Stanley Space Thrills Adventure starring Arthur C. Smith, Pernice Vevercheck, Princess Jillian introducing Gronga as herself, and, uh, written and illustrated by Steve Conley in color. So this is what you get. It's phenomenal. Um, great stuff. It's fun. It's Again, it's all computer, then on the computer. And it's just fun science fiction. Great stuff. Um, on the back is the accolades. It's such a great book. In the cast of characters right there. Um, I, I bought two... I bought two other copies from him to help support him. Um, one I'm giving to my nephew, and the other one's going to be a giveaway, a OK or something like that. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. But again, I, I bought a couple, couple copies from him. Great to support him. He's a phenomenal guy. Check him out. Go online. Steve Conley, Astounding Space Thrills, or um, his um, Middle Earth. I think it's Middle Earth. Oh, my God. He'll kill me. Without, if I don't remember this. Yeah, I think it's the Middle Earth, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's called that. Oh, I don't want to... Um, give me one second. I don't want to... Middle Age. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Steve. I'm still... Got a lot going on with all this stuff I'm going to show. That's what it's called, right there. Middleagecomicbook.com. Middleagecomic.com. Read for free online. Eisner Award nominee, Ringo nominee. He's got a lot of not of accolades for this stuff. And again, Stanley Space Thrills is no different. It's my favorite. I enjoy it immensely. So please check it out. Um, again, thanks, Steve. Thanks, Jim. Thank Frame Brothers. I appreciate all the stuff that you that you did for me at the con. If you guys, I doubt, I know Steve watches. I don't know if Jim and the Frame Brothers even know this channel exists, but it's one of those things. Um, on to some more books I picked up. I'm trying to move stuff around. Sorry, guys. Got a lot of stuff going on here. I'm trying to keep stuff segregated so I don't mix up new stuff and old stuff. Alright, another um, book I picked up um, is a new book from me. I've never seen this before. I'm a big fan of westerns, as you guys know. Um, this is The Outlaws, True Cases from the Sheriff's Files. This is number 14. It's got an LB Cole cover. Um, again, i got to put these in new bags and boards. Um, I've not done so. It's hard to get bags and boards right now. But um, I need to get new bags and boards, especially on one book, because it's the cover... The dealer put a lot of his ads on the back and board, so um, it takes away from the comic book. But anyway, this is a pretty cool book. Wonderful LB Cole cover. All right. And this has got a Schomburg cover. Um, Bronco Bill, number 11, uh, from Standard Comics. Again, this is a new one for me. Um, I never have them. I don't own it. I do not own an issue of Bronco Bill. But it's a great cover on this. From the same dealer I got, which is I'm very excited about, is um, Marvels of Science from Charlton. Um, number one, I think it's from 45 or 46. Unfortunately, I don't have it with me. He forgot to bring it. He showed it to me on Friday. I saw the picture of it. I'm like, yeah, cool. And again, he's a local dealer, but he's not lo he's local to Northern Virginia. We're in Baltimore. He's staying in Baltimore. So he was going to go home on Saturday night on Saturday night. And he's going to pick it up and bring it in with me with him on Sunday. I was going to get it on Sunday. He forgot. 
Uh, he forgot the book, but I saw a picture of it. It is graded at 5.5. Happy with that. I have no problem paying them up front. So I paid for the book, waiting for it. And hopefully I'll get it. Not hopefully, I know I'll get it. We'll have a local con in Frederick on the 21st of November. He's going to bring it there. And I'm going to pick it up then. So I'll be very happy to get that book. Again, it's the Marvels of Science from Charlton. Great looking book. Um, it's got some uh, some cool images on that cover. And this book's eluded me for a while, but I finally found a nice copy. Even with the, there's a date stamp on it, which is really cool. Um, they redid this, reprinted this book in 85. Um, but this is the original from 53, I believe. Um, this is Zoo Funnies, number one. Uh, like I said, this, this has eluded me for a while. Um, great condition. Uh, there's the date stamp right there. Um, pretty, pretty cool book. Um, very happy to ha finally find it and have it in the collection. I mean, I've seen them on eBay. I mean, it's not like you can't get it. But I'm very shy of eBay. I don't trust what I'm going to get. I've heard, I've heard and seen good things. Don't get me wrong, but I've also seen and heard of bad things. And I just want to find it in the wild. Part of the fun. Don't like the instant collection. Sometimes I'm just going to eBay. Click, click, click. Oh, it's mine. Um, it's just me. This is how I want to do it. Nothing wrong with the eBay aspect of it. I, I've, I've got things off of eBay, um, but finding them in the wild. To me, it's it, it's fun. Um, another book I really really like, number twenty five, The Space Adventures. Um, Dick Giordano, very uh, EC esque cover on this copy of Space Adventures, but it presents so nice. Um, found a nice copy. Um, first one I've had in my collection for years. I had this long time ago when I was a kid. Probably a mid-grade copy. I don't know what happened to it. But this is a beautiful, um, beautiful example of this book. Um, he says it's an 8.0. I think it's a little bit higher than that. Maybe. It could maybe a little bit. Um, but, uh. This uh, Marvel Tune one number one. Um, everyone's seen the book, but just showing when I got it at Baltimore. But it's a beautiful book. Um, like it a lot. Like it a lot. Um, almost completed the Marvel Two in one, two in Marvel Two in in one run. Almost completed that. This magazine is haunted. Number thirteen. Beautiful. It's an October issue. Beautiful. It's every the whole thing's Ditko. I think except for the last story. No, I think the whole thing is, is Ditko. Uh, let's look at that. The leaves in the air. The awesome the use of shadowing and it's just a phenomenal cover. Ditko man. He's the master, I tell you. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah, this is number 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 thirteen. Presents really well. Um, one of my happy, happy finds. Again, I liked all the books I found. Obviously, I wouldn't have bought them, but I've been looking for this for a while. It's eluded me a little bit. It's if it's not condition, it's price. If it's not price, it's condition. You know how it is. It's the same song and dance. We collectors go over, but I found it for a good price at a condition I like. And it's House of Secrets 61 with the um, first appearance of Eclipso. And it looks really nice. I'm very happy with this book. I read it last night. Great stuff. Yeah. And here's the one that's got a lot of stuff on the cover or on the bag not on the cover but it takes away from it but it doesn't peel off very well i need to get new bags and boards but it is um heroic comics number four 
uh, with Hydro Man. And this is from January of 41. So, uh, this is um, Heroic number four. I've always wanted this book. I always liked the Heroic comics because Hydro Man, I love the look of Hydro Man. I like the style, of course, Bill Everett. Uh, this is a Bill ever cover, and he did the story of Hydro Man in the book. Um, just love the goggles, the aviator helmet, the the collars and the wristbands. Just, just really, really a cool look for a character. I've followed this character since I first saw him in a fanzine about Golden Age heroes. Um, who put that out? Out of Florida in the early '60s. It was a fanzine, a four, five, four volume fanzine of obscure Golden Age characters. Centaur, Hillman, Columbia, people like that. Um, they, they, they cruelly drew it in. Um, the guy who did it is really well known in the fanzine uh, uh, and fandom back in the day. J.B. Love. That's who it is. J.B. Love. Um, had it is associated with these fanzines that put it out with these Golden Age characters. And ever since I saw a bunch of them, like Zippo, Microface, The Thunderer, The Mad Hatter, uh, people like that, TNT Todd, and of course Hydro Man. I fell in love with those characters. And I've seen this book once before and it was too pricey at the time for me. I was able to afford a copy. I still think I paid too much. Um, but it is, it is what it is. I mean... I saw it, um, I wanted it, and I would have felt, I would have had a complex of some sort. If I didn't pick it up, I would have been thinking about it. You know, would have, should have, could have type of mentality. Um, so I saw, he knocked off some money off of it. Uh, but I still think I paid a little bit too much. But like I said, you know, you, you, you use the old adage, you got to pay to play. So, but um, I'm very happy with, with, um, this issue is covered and it looks very very cool so I'm happy with this book um, oh this is uh, oh this is the the yearbook artists who attended the show will do um, will do illustrations Halloween pinup style illustrations um, this is the there's some artists that I've not heard of before who were there who did some stuff in this and it's really good but here's Steve Conley's um, the middle age very cool um, do him coming down a big pile of candy very very fun um, and I think Jim Calfiore's in here. He drew aliens trick-or-treating. The dress is human, some of them. And they're trick-or-treating. And there's a backstory to these aliens that we're going to find out at some point on a project from him about these aliens. That he's, they're always in the yearbook, these aliens. So um, this is cool to have. I got every yearbook since I've been... Since they've been putting them out, so I've got tons of them. Oh, and here are the, the two the two copies that I bought. Um, so if uh, if you guys want to copy of this, um, I got one left. Like I said, one's going to my nephew. Um, I don't want to do something crazy, but if you put a comment in there that you'll check out Steve Conley, you go to his website, and I'll randomly, if you make it, put in the comments that you like it, and you like to see what it's about, I'll randomly pick the, the few comments that might say that, and I'll send you that book, is what I'll do. Help support Steve, um... You know, anything, anything I can do to help him out to get readers and to get people, um, you know, into into his work. So that's, that's what I'll do. So if you like the video, 
But you put comments in, in there about Steve or about wanting the book. Um, put it in there and then I randomly pick somebody. I won't do it online or anything like that. I'll just do it on my own and just let you know if you want it or if you won that book or not. So, that's what I'll do. Uh, I know it's unorthodox, but don't it be like three or four people, I'm sure. Or hopefully it's more. Hopefully it's like 30 people that say, yeah, I'm interested. I'd like to check it out. I've been to his website. I know about him. He's a great guy. I'd like to check out his book. I didn't get a chance to get one. I, that'd be great. And it will pick out from, from those names. Some from the $2 boxes. I'm not going to show every comic book because i got 70 of them here. Um, but I, I'm going to show them in groups. Um, Dr. Fate. Um, the Giffen and Diamantes. I guess that's how you say his name. He was there. Um, Giffen wasn't, but Diamantes was there. Uh, four issues of Dr. Fate. The four issue miniseries. I got that. And... Oh... I'm not gonna get you know, I'm not gonna show all these because that's gonna bore everybody to tears. Give me a minute here. I meant to put these in separate piles, but I'm running out of room up here. Here we go. Alright, one to twenty-two, the return of Dr. Fate um run by Diamantes and um McManus and McKenna. What's going on? So I got one to one to uh, twenty-two of this series. I picked up trying to do some run fillers. I wanted to have some stuff. I just want to sit there and go, yeah, I need these books. And um, doing books that I really, really enjoy. I needed Defenders 99. Um, found that for $2. Defenders 107. Found that for 2 These books all were 2 bucks, so I'm not going to keep repeating that. Doc Savage, I was missing 2, 3, and 4 from the, um, from the miniseries. Um... Uh, I used to have them, but I don't know what happened to them, but I was able to find these. So I'm very happy to get those. Uh, let's see. One of my favorite comic books from the 80s, which they are many, but this was a big one. I love the Blue Beetle. I'm sorry, the Blue Devil. I got the Blue Beetle coming up. I did that on Instagram. I showed the stack of books talking about how cool the Blue Devil is and all this other stuff, and then find another stack of Blue Beetles I was showing. So, Blue Devil, got a, got a random stack of this, of issues that I know I needed. Um, this series was going much longer. I had went to the military, collected the book in the early 80s. It still was going into the military, never finished it off, and I never realized how many of the Blue Devil, how long it lasted, which was great. So I got a bunch of issues of Blue Double. It's just so fun. Uh, met Paris Collins, underrated guy, underrated artist. He wasn't at Baltimore this year. He was at Baltimore a couple years ago. Got a drawing of Blue Devil. I have an original artwork page that I bought years ago, Blue Devil. And I got, um, when he worked on The New Gods, I got a page of, from him on that. And that was another fun series that he did. Um... He's just a phenomenal artist, very straightforward comic book artist. Um, it's just the way his line work is. Um, it's just he's just a, he's just a good good artist to have on a comic that you want to read it and have a good time with. Uh, what else did I get? Um, the Blue Beetle, like I just mentioned again, Paris Collins, a bunch of Blue Beetles that I that that I needed. Um, these are two bucks a piece. And it's just, look at that cover. It's just so good. It's so good with the Mad Men. Mm, good stuff. So I got a bunch of those. And what's this last stack? 
Oh, Claw. The Unconquered. I finished my run of Claw, The Unconquered. Um, these are $2 a piece. Uh, another cool series. Dave Michelini and um, Ernie Chaw. Or Chan, depending on what when you see the artwork is being signed. Did this series. It's good stuff. Unpretentious fun. Good stuff. Oh, I also picked up. I found um, Century uh, signed by Jim Calafuri up there. Uh, he did. He drew Century in Force Works, which is one of my favorite runs that he did. And he drew the one shot um, Century with a phenomenal, like a color pencil, acrylic cover that he did, like he did on some of the Force Works on some of the Force Work covers, and the FF Unlimited. It was like a an acrylic. Um, I for, I always forget to ask him what he what medium he used for that for those covers. But look for those covers. Look for, and you'll want them in your collection. And the, of course, the storyline and the artwork and the books are great. I got some Force Work pages on the wall. I don't know if you can see him from here. Yeah. Wait, what am I doing here? There we go. Right, there we go. That page right there is from Force Works. I got another one somewhere. I can't. I can't see. It's not on this wall somewhere. But yeah, that's a Force Works page right there. From Calafiore's run. But yeah, you do century. So I found this figure. And it was still in the package and had Jim sign it on top and thought it was just fun to have in the collection. So that's about it. That's um, that's my Baltimore haul. Um, I was there for all three days. Um, usually I'm there from start to finish. Um, but this old man is uh, couldn't take the walking around and carrying everything and got tired and, and uh, there was always alone. I didn't, um, friends couldn't go. Uh, my wife couldn't go. Uh, so I was, so it's kind of, you 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 know, you don't have anyone to have feedback, a sounding board to discuss things with or anything else. So I did what I wanted to do. I allotted money for each day and I, and I did everything. I still have money left over for the convention, November 21st. So that'd be great to go and pick up books then too. So. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the artwork, the comics, the books I picked up. And like I said, that other um, Steve Conley book is available. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. And, um, oh, I haven't done a video for a while. I realize that. But I've been doing a live stream. Some of you, some of you know on Graphic Man's channel on Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. We're there, the Four Color Fossils, we're there with a bunch of other, um, Dr. Silver Age, Graphic Man, Graph 2 Orloff, um, sometimes, um, Shannon, Solid 4 ST Bend, uh, I think that's what his moniker is on the YouTube, I, I might have stretched some of the names of the names around, he's with us, um, Eric Breen, uh, who else is there, myself, um, Captain Strange Life, and anybody else who, who wants to pop in will pop up there and we'll just discuss comic books. We've been discussing, there's always a theme every week, so I've been doing those weekly episodes with them. So anyone who makes videos know it takes a lot of time, energy, and effort. And you dig out comic books for the video, you have a hard time putting them back, or it takes a while to put them back. So, I was going to do a video before the con on Wally Wood, but that never happened. I, maybe I'll do one this weekend on Wally Wood. Anyway, thank you everyone for viewing and subscribing. Please comment, let me know what you think about the show. If you wanted to go, you didn't go, why? Or anything, you, you know, uh, maybe you want to go next year. I know people who missed it just couldn't go because of, of, of other reasons that I usually meet up with. And um, there's always next year. And the next year's Baltimore Con, 28th, 29th, and 30th of October. All right before Halloween. So it'd be a good segue into Halloween going to the uh, Baltimore Comic Con. It's highly recommended, especially if you like comic books. 
to Baltimore where it's at. All right, guys, take care. Thank you. And remember, tomorrow, Graphic Man, Four Color Fossils, we're talking horror comics, we're talking scary comics. Please be there. Check it out. Jump in the comments. Let us know you guys are there and what you think. All right, you guys take care.